Hello, Lillian Lemmer here. I wanted to show off how to get into a nice developer environment for FreeBSD starting at the installation of FreeBSD. Um, I'm going to be doing all of this in VirtualBox, uh, so that might be handy if you want to follow along. Um, we also have a developer image, which is pretty much what I'm going to be showing you here today, except it's already set up for you and you can play around with it. Um, alrighty, let's dive into it. I'm just going to call this FreeBSD demo. 64-bit uh, BSD type and the version, yeah, FreeBSD 64-bit. Um, I'm just going to give it 512 MB. It really doesn't need much. Uh, it generally operates okay on um, 100 MB of RAM, uh, but the thing is you'll run out of swap space if you use the automatic partitioner because it just blindly like doubles whatever you have for the RAM value. So like if you try to do a big package update procedure, package installation procedure, it's going to run out of swap space pretty quickly. So that's why I'm being lazy and just giving it 512 MB. Um, and you can always go back and uh, change it back to like 100 MB if you want to, and it seems to run just fine. Anywho, so 512 MB, um, we're going to create a virtual hard disk of the virtual box disk image type, VDI. Dynamically allocated, uh, let's say the limit is 20 GB. And one last thing, we're going to go to settings, storage, and we're going to load a FreeBSD installation ISO which I already I conveniently have right here. I recommend getting the boot only um, because then when you install it, uh, you can make sure that you have some of the latest packages, but you're, you're gonna probably want to um, run FreeBSD update later anyway. I'll cover that in another video probably. Um, all right, so it's ready to boot. I'm just going to click start here, and it's going to launch the image. Oh, that's right, this thing's funky, it's going to switch it back, and then I can do that. <laughs> Alright, so it's just booting into the installer. There we go. We want to select install. Continue with the default key map. Uh, I'll just type in a demo box for my host name. Uh, I generally don't use the ports tree. It's a really bad idea to mix ports with packages. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's basically uh, compiling stuff versus just downloading it from the internet and like installing or extracting it. So I'm not going to use ports. Um, I don't really want any of the games included. That's okay. We're going to install the files from the internet and I'm going to set up IPv4 DHCP on the network adapter that it finds. <laughs> and then mm, I'm not going to set up IPv6. Um, the default mirror is fine. I'm going to auto UFS uh, the disk, entire disk, GPT, uh, finish and commit. Okay, and while you're waiting for that, you can. Write war and peace. Um, you could start an empire or become a master of chess. In my spare time that I wait, 
for loading bars, I, uh, I've been slowly painting the Mona Lisa, but with a, uh, a pin. Oh, no, here we go. So, new password for root, I'm just going to do blank. You can totally do that. Is this machine's clock set to UTC? I don't know, so I'm going to say nope. And then I'm going to specify my location. I'm in Central America. I, I'm pretty sure, yep, there we go. You can just hit the number 5 to jump to, to 50, and then you just go one up, and it's the United States. Uh, let's do Central Time. I'm going to hit 1. Yep. Uh, SSA. Uh, SSHD is really handy to have. It'll allow you to SSH or like connect to your VirtualBox machine without actually being inside the machine. Um, it, it's very practical for uh, dragging or for um, copying files using SCP, that sort of thing. Um, I've never used the dump dev, but maybe that's because I'm silly. <laughs> So we're just going to go with SSHD. We're going to add a user account. I'm going to add one for me called Lily. <laughs> Let's, I'm going to add my limited user to Wheel because I'm going to install an application called sudo, and it's going to use the Wheel group to allow people uh, as a whitelist for using sudo. <clears throat> We're going to change the shell later to ZSH. So we, we just won't worry about that for now. Yep. And yes, empty password. Nope. That is A-OK. -okay. Uh, no more users. Exit. Uh, yes, we do want to make some modifications before exiting the installer. First thing we want to do is get package, so just type package and hit enter, and then say, yep, we want to install it. Okay, now we can package install, we want window maker, that's going to be like our GUI. And then we want rocks filer, I think it's called, that's going to be our um, file browser. And then Sakura is going to be our terminal emulator. So like the terminal we type shit, uh, stuff into in our, um, in our GUI environment. Uh, and I wonder if I'm forgetting. We might as well install Firefox, CSH, uh, gedit. I think that's a, that's a pretty good set of stuff to roll with in addition to Zorg, of course. Okay, so we got Window Maker, Rocks Filer, Sakura, Firefox, ZSH, which we're going to change our shell to. Gedit's like a really good um, GUI editor, uh, and then Zorg, which is going to allow us to use a GUI, basically. So we're just going to install those things, and this will take a while, so yeah. Okay, we're back. Um, it just installed all the stuff we talked about. Um, the first thing we're going to do before we even exit the installer is we want to edit our rc.conf and we're going to enable dbus. Um, if you don't know how to use vi, uh, you can just hit i and that brings you into insertion mode and then it works like a regular um, text editor. So I can hit enter and I'll bring it to a new line, then I hit the up arrow key and then I'm, you know, so on and so forth. dbus enable equals yes. So just put dbus underscore enable equals yes um, in your RC comp. And then uh, once, once you're done typing stuff, you hit escape. And then you, to save and quit, you hold shift and press Z, Z. Um, and now I think we're actually ready to exit and eject the disk. Okay, so I'm going to remove this as soon as it's safe. There we go. So now it's going to boot 
the installation we just set up. <clears throat> Pardon me. <laughs> the first thing... Oh, you know, I forgot we have to install sudo. I never got around to that. That's okay, because there's a couple of things we have to do in root anyway. So let's package install sudo. Yep. Um, we also, in addition to installing sudo, we want to say, oh, we want to edit the sudoers file, which is in user, local, um, etc, and then sudoers. We're going to use vi again. Um, press the forward slash, which shares the same key as the question mark, and uh, search for wheel. And then you can use the arrow keys to navigate down to here. And what you're going to want to do is hit X twice. One, two. And that uncomments it. And then we're going to hit shift and while we're holding shift press Z and Z again. And that enables us to use sudo from our limited account. But before we back out of our root account at the moment, let's configure Zorg. There we go. And we're going to want to move the config we just generated into the file, the location that it's supposed to be. There we go. Now we can exit. And I'm going to log in as myself. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to run uh, wmaker.instantiate. And that's going to configure uh, my machine to work with WindowMaker. So it, it'll, it'll configure your X in it RC for you and um, some other stuff. We're just going to hit enter. Okay. Um, oh, another thing we should do is we want to change our shell to ZSH. So we type in CH for change and then SH for shell and then hyphen S for the actual shell we want to change it to. And then that's uh, user local bin ZSH, I believe. Yep. There we go. So if I exit, log back in, and see we're using ZSH now. I'm going to start X to uh, begin Window Maker. There we go. Uh, this is going to be the terminal. So we got Firefox. Let's launch Firefox. I'm going to drag this over here into our dock so that when we close Firefox, uh, it'll stay in our bar. You know, like the uh, OS X dock. Um, first thing I want to do is, well, let's add a couple of other items. Like... Uh, Sakura, which is our terminal emulator, which is a lot nicer than this uh, default one, which is included. Go ahead and close this since it's running in the terminal. And then we can drag it off the dock and it makes the most magical animation. Oof. Okay. Uh, let's go into how to configure oh my ZSH. It makes your terminal experience a lot nicer. So I'm just going to search oh my ZSH. Ah, so we're going to want to install wgit, so we're going to say sudo package install wgit. Yep. Cool. 
then we're going to copy this and paste it here. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Oh, <laughs> I forgot to install Git. Yep. All right, now we can run it. Uh, one of the prerequisites for uh, this script is that Git or, or uh, that you have Git installed. There we go. Now it's very nice. So one of the things I really like about this is it's like a couple of step process to get stuff like this working. So if I get clone, say the one of the Hypatia repositories like Hypatia software org slash adventure docs. Oop. Git clone clone classic. Classic really. There we go. And we can change into this directory. And then you can see it's actually telling us um, which branch we're in. So I could check out into another branch or make a new branch. Call it like la 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 la. Git checkout. Switch to the new branch, la 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 la, and you can see that's reflected in the terminal. Even better yet, it also detects if you've made any changes to that branch. So if we change like style.css, you know, let's just delete a line. Right, well, right and quit. And uh, yeah, you can see the little X now, meaning that we have some un we have some changes in this branch. Let's run updates for our system. Um, oops. <laughs> so we're going to run FreeBSD update fetch to just get the um, updates themselves. takes a while. That's installed and you hit Q to exit more. Um, you just want to run sudo freebsd update install to actually install those updates that you fetched. It's telling us that the SRC components are not installed because we chose not to, uh, well, we're not looking to do any compiling. <laughs> All right, so the updates should be installed. Maybe we can do that. Well, everything seems to be all good. Cool. So going to run and we'll type rocks filing. Oops. Oh, it's actually rocks. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to drag and drop that over here. And it acts a little funny. Um, for some reason, it thinks that uh, the command should be rocks filer, but it's just rocks. So you can just change that in the settings of the doc item and then just hit OK. So now we have all these items we can launch. You have your um, terminal and then uh, uh, your file manager and a web browser. Um, um, that's all the time I have for now. Uh, I hope this helped. Um, <laughs> at least getting you into a GUI uh, with some tools in FreeBSD. Uh, thank you for your time. Bye-bye.